Hello, this is Pastor Bob at MarriageHelp.com. I'd like to share with you a lesson today about self-worth. We all know what self-worth is. It's defined as how you feel about yourself, your own identity, your own ability to conceptualize who you are, what your abilities are, what your talents are, what your gifts are, what your weaknesses are, what your fallibilities are, and who you are as a person. That's called your self-worth. It's the picture of who you are in your own mind. So where do you get your self-worth? Interestingly enough, self-worth is a misnomer in most of the ways that we use the term. It doesn't come from within us. It comes from outside of us. We get our self-worth because of what someone tells us we are. Uh, back in fourth grade, I had an art teacher. She gave us an assignment. I was supposed to draw something or create something, and I looked out the window, and instead of doing what she told me, I drew what I saw out the window. She came to me and she said, you're the most uncreative person I've ever known. Fourth grade, art teacher, very creative lady. I didn't realize then she was completely unstable. I carried her words in my mind as my definition of myself for almost 20 years after that point. I went to college, sitting there in college classes saying, well, you have to have somebody else be creative because I'm the most uncreative person around. As a college student, I'm repeating what Mrs. Cartier said back in fourth grade. Where does our self-worth come from, our self-identity? From other people. Now, you may have had a family of origin, your mother, father, and kids, who called you weird name. Maybe you were fatso. Maybe you were skinny legs. Maybe you were the, what was one of them, chicken lips. I don't know what they might have called you, but the point is you can't let someone else's opinion, who may or may not have been working in your own best interest, determine who you are, while at the same time carefully listening to what your most precious people say about you. Let me explain that, what it means. If your husband, as a wife, your husband says, you are a precious individual to me and I love you because you are so unique and special, that you must listen to. If your next door neighbor says, you're a terrible person, don't listen to him. That's not necessarily who you are. It may be that they're having a bad day, or they're angry at their own spouse, or they just kicked the dog. I don't know. But you have to carefully select who you take into your heart as who you are. Self-worth must be carefully sorted. Husbands, don't say anything depreciating to your wives. Don't use strange names. Don't use demeaning language. Don't use put-downs and derogatory terms. Don't just slam your wife with verbs and words because they'll understand that's who they are. They'll take that to themselves. Wives, if you don't clean up your language and completely sort out words like idiot and stupid and dumbhead and all the other kinds of things, you are going to be able to damage your husband in ways that will take a long time to repair. Because his worth comes from your opinion and your statements about who he is. Wives, most, the most easy temptation you fall into is being angry at your husband. But don't just be angry. Don't just be accusatory. Remember, he's getting his identity from what you say. You must carefully filter what we say to each other about who they are because self-worth comes from those who are most precious in your life and you can't get to the point where you can resist the impact of what they say if it's negative, forever, until you finally begin to believe it about yourself. 
Be very careful what you say. Be careful how you characterize the other person in your marriage. Thank you for watching MarriageHelp.com. And I know there's more that we can do to help you because we have a good plan to make your marriage filled with joy. Thank you for watching.